Hello, and welcome to Feely Daily Vlogs. Uh, I'm Gus. I'm Tim. I'm Amber. And together we make Feely Creative, a audio and visual company based in uh, Salina, Kansas. So welcome. Uh, today is Friday, April 3rd, 2020. Yep. And we are about three weeks into social distancing. Um, and uh, the country is a couple of months into probably uh, the coronavirus. And um, going We're to our it. daily New York <laughs> Times update here, uh, worldwide, we did surpass a million. Uh, yep. they, they don't have a, a, def a definite number because it's getting mm -hmm. harder and harder to keep track of. But um, they, they have confirmed we're over a million cases with uh, 53,000 deaths worldwide. Um, and then if we come come down and we look at United States alone, we account for about a quarter of the world's uh, cases with 244,000 cases and 6,000 deaths, 6,257 deaths. Wow. So our hot, the, the worst hit communities as of right now are, um, as you might expect, the larger cities. Um, mm -hmm. well, New York, I'm sure, is still yeah. not doing great. New York State has 92,000 cases, which is, you know, that's crazy. almost, it's well over a third, less than half. Right. Oh, um, wow. And uh, New Jersey has 25,000 cases. Uh, L.A., uh, San Francisco, Miami, um, uh, Baton Rouge, and um, uh, New Orleans, Chicago, Detroit, um, those those communities all have, you know, large, large amount. Um here in Kansas, we have surpassed uh, 500 cases now, yeah. um, and I believe, I don't, does anyone remember how many deaths, let's see, hold on, 14 deaths in Kansas so far. Mm. Wow. Um, yeah, so we're, we're just continuing. We, uh, if, if you're not online, you, well, I don't know, you're probably not watching this <laughs> video, <laughs> um, but uh, there's been some interesting studies done based on cell phone GPS records to see how yeah. people are doing social distancing. Mm. Um, yeah. There's only two counties in Kansas that received an A on their report card, <laughs> um, and they actually got an A minus. And I don't, I can't recall off the top of my head, um, but they, I believe they're Eastern Kansas. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. we I was say, do you remember getting, which counties? I, I, oh, I wish I could, but no, I, I, yes, I Salina's got like a D minus. <laughs> That's not surprising. Dude, okay. I, on one of them, I saw we had a C minus, but there's a lot around us that have mm -hmm. Fs. Um, yeah. And so. At least we're not yeah. that bad. Amber, do you want to share your story from Walmart this morning? Oh my yeah, God. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> that was crazy. Okay. So I have a friend, um, who's a nurse here in town and, um, she just got orders last night cause she was going to work today. Um, that they are required to wear a mask the whole time they're at work, which makes sense. Um, but they're only issued one, and it's not like one a day. It is you get one. Um, so they have one medical mask per person. They're recycling it. They have, like, paper bags that they put it in that they're going to keep it in so they don't run through masks too fast. Um, so I suggested making fabric masks to put over that um, to keep mm -hmm. them cleaner safer, longer. Um, so I went to Walmart to go buy some supplies to help make some of those. And there was this older gentleman like standing in line and he, he wasn't following the stay six feet apart rule. And there are stickers, there are stickers on the floor. So you can tell where six feet are. Um, and one of the Walmart employees like gently reminded him that, you know, you should be six feet apart just so you're safe. Right. And he like, he pretty much cussed her out. He told her that it was insane and that, that he lives in a free country and he'll stand wherever the hell he wants to. <laughs> and I was like, this is, that's, that's just crazy to me. Like, even, even if it was just a suggestion, like, way out in left field and it might protect somebody, like, why is it a big deal to stand six feet away from someone else? I will never understand people like, like people like that are the same people that go to restaurants and like chastise their waitress or their waiter because they don't get like one minuscule thing in their meal right, I just, or didn't get their meal fast enough. Like I will never understand those people. There's a lot of people that just lack that common decency of of how you treat other people and how you you just have to think about that it's not all about you and it's about you know 
how everybody's doing and how, right. you know. Well, mm-hmm. like, even if yeah. this was, like, 100% fake and it was completely a hoax, like, why would it still bother you to stand six feet away from someone? <laughs> right, I mean, people, you know have, pers- I mean? people like, have personal bubbles. What? I mean, that's not like a <laughs> It's not even that far. <laughs> really, it's not. It really isn't. On on the inverse of that, I had a uh, a, a happier, completely opposite of that <laughs> interaction yesterday. Good. Well, that's um, good. I, I feel good I, for you. Uh, I didn't go out, but I mm-hmm. um, I was I was working on on the food bank video, mm. and I heard a knock on my door, and I wasn't expecting anything. You know, sometimes that's like a, you know, when I get deliveries from Amazon or something, if it's not in my right. mailbox, they'll knock on my door, and I I knew that whatever I had ordered recently wasn't hadn't shipped yet, so I went to my door, and uh, it turns out my uh, my neighbor uh, in the duplex that I live in. Um, who is a kind of, uh, every interaction I've had with her has been, has been pleasant. She's a kind of a sweet 76 year old lady, um, that evidently has some hearing problems, but, um, every interaction Which, I've had with her is pleasant. So she, she came by to check on me and see if I was doing okay. Oh, uh, that's sweet. right. Like that's, I, I had <laughs> thought about knocking on her door, but I figured her, like her family's over there pretty often. So I figured they were doing a good job of taking care of her. Um, but so we, we, we talked for a few minutes and exchanged numbers in case that way we need to get a hold of each other. I mean, That's I cool. could always just like knock on her side of the door. Knock on the, the wall. Knock, knock, knock. I Duplex could do that. Buddy. I, <laughs> I, I thought about doing that the other day. Um, uh, her, uh, one of her granddaughters was, um, was over and taking some bunch of stuff down to the basement and I thought about opening the door and saying hi, but just to check, but at least so now we've got each other's numbers and we can communicate that way if we need to. But she's been pretty good about trying to to stay in and be so, in social distancing. And um, thankfully, she's well stocked on provisions. Uh, her uh, evidently her um, her her late husband was I guess part of the military, so like she gets mm-hmm. those those checks and stuff mm-hmm. from that. And so usually she'll go to the commissary on the base and get her supplies there. Oh, that's cool. Um, and she will like apparently stock up for like three months at a time. Wow. So she should be should be well and good um, for that. But evidently, in, in theory, she might uh, bring me some muffins today or tomorrow. Ah. Right now. Wow, nice cranberry <laughs> orange. Which mm. <laughs> those are some good ones. So there there there's some happiness for you. That's good. Oh, for sure. <laughs> for sure. There's there are some. I mean, just it. every day. There's a lot of of really amazing things happening. Um, I cut just the beginning of the Today Show before I came down mm. um, here, and um, there is a, a community somewhere I, I don't even sure where it was in in the United States, but uh, all the kids went out and drew chalk in front of their house on mm. the, on the street, and then they flew over it with a drone, Aww. and they put it to music. Um, this guy put out a song that he'd had in the in the role for a long time, just. Um, it just felt like the time to put it out. And so it's just kind of this magical um, combination of music and, and that that visual that was just you know, mm. that's cool. insightful. That was their morning boost, one of their two morning boosts this morning. So. Sounds kind of cool. Yeah. I haven't seen a I – did, I did watch uh, the other day you had mentioned um, the guy who played Jim in The Office. Uh, oh, yeah. God, I can't remember his name oh, right now. no. Now I uh, can't remember his name. Um, I can't but, remember. you know, I – I, I saw the uh, the Good News Network thing he was doing. Um, mm-hmm. That was actually very like I that that was delightful. And I've never been like super big on The Office in the past, just because like <laughs> those first couple seasons are hard to get through um, for me. Like, no, I I agree. I you just got to get past those first two seasons, and then it gets a lot better for me. <laughs> the Office is a love story about Jim and Pam. Okay, getting off my soapbox. Now we can move on. To- <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we'll get him going on the office, and he'll rant for like an hour about it. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously, I will. It's yeah, like that's what we need to do. All we need to do is uh, we'll just do that, and then have uh, we'll play the office theme song. Yeah, and then go back into the <laughs> back <laughs> to the rant. <laughs> okay, so yesterday we had the train themed uh, vlog. Today we'll be oh, we- the office themed vlog. <laughs> that's right. Which, by the way, uh, so my folks have been watching the vlogs, and oh, great. Uh, um. Hello, my da- Tim's folks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, uh, my dad, so my, my dad sent me a text um, saying that he was, quote, hurt that I didn't mention he can do a train whistle. 
Um, so like without a train whistle, like he can. Yes. So um, there what? was back back in the I don't know forties to sixties. Um, there was a guy named Boxcar Willie hmm. that was, I believe, a musician, mm-hmm. and he could do a train whistle with his voice. Um, and so my dad <laughs> learned how to do that. Oh my gosh! By uh, by watching him. Oh my gosh! Um, if I can, I'll have him try and uh, record a video and send it to me, that we can show it yes. in the vlog. Yes, that's crazy. Please. Um, yeah, so he 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 can do that. That's crazy. Um, that's, that's, awesome. that's one thing I've always been impressed by. I I've never. I have yet to manage how to, to how to. I can't imagine that's good for your vocal cords, but power I don't know. <laughs> he like he does like often he will. Um, hmm. We've been to like jam like bluegrass, like church sessions or something like that uh-huh. where like, they'll sing gospel songs and usually he'll bring along uh, some spoons or or the bones and that's cool. He'll nice. do that Dick and Dick he'll Dick do Dick. his train whistle <laughs> if the song is uh, nice. Got a moment for it. Nice. That's awesome. Wow. Um, I did have some other um, human interaction yesterday. <laughs> oh. I, uh, I, so I, I've been going out for a daily walk of at least like a half hour or so. And um, my, uh, my buddy Devin, who, who helped us out in the Kansas music video, mm-hmm. um, he lives like apparently like 20 minutes from my house. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I decided to actually pop by yesterday and, and, Talk to him because I, I I told him I'd been going for walks and I'd been in the area, so I popped by and, and talked to him for a little bit, which was good to connect. And uh, actually, weirdly, ran into a so I, I ran into a uh, a kid outside of his house before Devin had come out, and uh, the kid like had his had his pupper with him and Aww. was like riding a scooter, um, and it was oh my god that that dog was adorable, and like for I don't know why I think we just talked about pets for like a second and so like. He asked if I had any pictures of my cat because I had told him I had a cat. And he was excited about that. But um, he mentioned that he was apparently going to uh, St. John's Mission. No, no, not St. John's. Um, uh, Christ Cathedral for lunch that day. Mm. Which this is a good opportunity for us to talk. Tim, you've been working on a video for the food bank here in Salina for... Oh man, mm-hmm. like a month. It probably? feels like an eternity. <laughs> yeah. And, um, uh, it's so been it's been about a month or so, which. I'm not thrilled about that timetable, but I feel like it's at a good, good, great place. Oh, definitely. Definitely. So we shot for about two or three days with the food bank uh, a little over a month ago now. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, Tim, Tim, you've been, you've been editing it. Is there anything that, you know, you'd like to like to say about that video just from your experience? Um, other than, I mean, it's been frustrating, but it's, it's a good frustration because it's just something that I feel like. I'm a lot more comfortable doing projects like that now, mm-hmm. um, despite that it, it's a bigger one than I think I had. I haven't taken on one with quite that much uh, to do since <laughs> uh, since Ember and I did the Sail About Journey video back in oh, college. Oh God, yeah. Um, and that was a trip. But <laughs> I think I think um, when the video is out, I think it'll be an important piece for for those in our community because um, I know personally, like growing up, I. Uh, like I, I grew up in the church and stuff, and um, there was always the food pantry um, mm-hmm. where, where I was from. And I know that uh, my folks and my mom often goes over to still, I think, to uh, to volunteer and help out in the food pantry in, uh, mm-hmm. where they live. Um, and I never really had thought about the food pantry because I never really had to worry about it. I mean, my folks both work in the, uh, in the, in the school system. Um, so, like, they're not... They don't get a lot of money, but we were comfortable enough to, to live mm-hmm. um, in, you know, in the house we were in and, and doing all that kind of stuff. So, uh, But I think it's an important piece, and I think more people need to uh, – I, I hope a lot of people see it and, and start donating stuff and trying to help them out. Definitely. Because there are, there are people like I, – I, like that kid I, I met yesterday, I don't know um, uh, what his home situation is like. Um but the fact that he was going over to Christ Cathedral seems to me like I mean it's clear that he's been there before. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm I wonder how you know if maybe they don't get a lot where he lives. I, he was, um, it was over near Montrose, and that area is not like super high quality houses and stuff. So um, yeah, I mean there's some there are some couple nice ones out there, but 
Um, you know, it makes me wonder if, if he's one of those that, that maybe his, his family's out of work or, or maybe they just they don't make enough to, to be able to afford a lot of food. And so going like programs like that that they have at that church that get food from the food bank is important and needs to oh, be supported. Totally. Um, and so that, that's the, just, you know, the food bank, I think going into that project, I, I knew the food bank existed. Mm-hmm. But I basically thought of it as like a grocery store for people that couldn't afford to pay, mm-hmm. and yeah, um, and and yeah. I think there's an element of that, but mm-hmm. um, but I think through the filming process and and through watching the video that you've put together, Tim, I, I think mm-hmm. it, it it just highlights the fact that it's it's really a lot more than that. You know, it's it's connecting all the mm-hmm. needs of the community food wise with all the supplies in the community food wise, and and so that's why. Um, like Christ Cathedral, like you were saying, you know, they've been feeding the homeless for a long time and, and mm-hmm. like a lot of people every day with amazing quality food. We, we oh, yeah. To, yeah. Those, <laughs> those, eat we those, those, those gyros we had were food. phenomenal. And I, I mean, it's healthy and it's nutritious and mm-hmm. it's just mm-hmm. wow. And then there's um, what's going on at another church in Sinai. Yeah, uh, St. Mission John's Missionary Baptist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they, they have the uh, um, um, after oh, school. Uh, I, I, I want. I want, it's not it's not Head Start. It, it's a something start. Um, yeah. the, but they have a program there that they they feed um, the kids, kids that come. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because mm-hmm. they don't necessarily have have food or they don't get like you know dinner pretty much. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, when we filmed this project, you know, it, it seemed like um, the food bank was there for the people, you know, for those few people at the bottom. Mm-hmm. And and since then, you know, we went from, I mean, a very low level of unemployment, like very like historically right. low, to the biggest unemployment we've had in, right. in decades, and and the biggest our country's ever seen. And so, you know, the, the fact is, is that the needs have changed, and that just in the few short weeks since we filmed that, you, you know, more now the, the food bank is service. exactly it's it's something that that the a huge portion of our community is going to, to probably have to rely upon for a while. Mm-hmm. So it's well, I noticed um, they actually did put out a video on Facebook a week or so ago, um, just kind of asking, saying that they were, you know, they were staying open and that they were um, doing their best to keep supplying food. But their shelves in the video, at least where he was standing, yeah, are empty. Were yeah, really bare. Um, and mm-hmm. I know that like I haven't really bought a lot of groceries since I you know, stocked up for my, for myself, mm-hmm. but I feel like when, when next I go out, I need to go and get something or, or, you know, like yeah. Dylan's will, will deliver now. Like we, like we talked about a couple of days ago, Yeah, maybe like buying something on there and just saying, drop it off at the food bank. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. true. Yeah. Hannah and I just got done with our kind of our annual gifting to, to different organizations. And, mm-hmm. um, I had a brief conversation with, with the director of the food bank over the, over the email. And, mm-hmm. and Michael just kind of said that like money's great, but what we really need is food. Like, <laughs> right. Um, and so, mm-hmm. yeah, that's, that's something we're going to try to include in our, our planning here is just a way to get some food and get it there. Cause I, I yeah, it's, um, you know, things are, are kind of desperate when, when they're basically saying like, we love money and money's great, but, <laughs> but we'd rather have not food. what feeds people. Right. You know, like, like food is mm-hmm. what feeds people and we need food. And yeah. Right, and I know that a lot of the stuff that they like um, that they've run out of are stuff that are um, like the non-perishable stuff, so like yeah. pasta and rice and I believe it. Um, a lot of that stuff is just is just gone. Yeah. Um, with this, and so like especially like in, in the current crisis now more than ever, really, if people have the ability to support them, they should because. If the food bank isn't supported, then that's, you know, that that's a really really large chunk of people right. that are not going to be able to to get food uh, during this yeah. this this nation worldwide crisis. Yeah, uh, that's happening. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, for all those people out there that that are you know have donated to their food bank or are volunteering at their food bank or even people that go there, you know, thank you for supporting their mission. Mm-hmm. You know, just all over the place, like. Obviously, it's it's needed needed now more than ever, and um, and that's just one of the charitable organizations in, mm-hmm. in our community that's that's mm-hmm. working really hard to try to ensure 
people's healthiness and happiness. So right. I know um, the Mission and the Ashby House, both homeless shelters are still open mm-hmm. and running. Good. So that's I mean. great. <laughs> it's it's really hard to think about people like I mean, we live such sheltered lives, especially now that we we have the luxury of being able to um, just social distance and mm-hmm. still do something. Right. You know, it it, mm-hmm. it it seems like there's a real inequality in that, that, that people in the healthcare profession, for instance, mm-hmm. you know, they're putting their lives on the line every day. I mean, they're literally fighting Yeah, you know, fighting, you get one mask. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, not even for the whole day. It's like, yeah, that, that's what I find so creepy about people that aren't willing to take social distancing seriously is that yeah. there are literally people dying, Yeah. you know, to make this world mm. a better place. And, and they're basically just giving it the middle finger. You know, they're, right. they're saying, you know, my my freedom is more important than your health, and and that's Pretty just much wrong. Sort of that's just flat out wrong. It's very very wrong. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, freedom is important for us to have, but sure, you you have to be like I was talking to my neighbor yesterday and just saying, you know, we both kind of said the same thing. You just have to be smart about this. It's not right. You can't just be considering yourself in mm-hmm. this. You have to consider everyone else because we're all going yes. through it and if you know even if just one per even if it were just one person who who decides to say screw it i don't care right like that guy at walmart this, this morning that could be the one know, person that infects another 10 people <laughs> right exactly yeah. and then that spreads like wildfire for lack of a better way to put it um people just need you're right and i don't there, there's no I wish there were a magic way to make everyone understand and see that this is something that is important to deal with, and that I don't think some people will understand until it personally affects them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and it, you know, you can really tell how many people are being affected by how many celebrities are being affected. Like, yeah. I, I'm not, I'm not trying to glorify celebrities already than, than mm-hmm. more than they already are, but. Um, you know, I mean, that's just kind of the tip of the iceberg. You know, like those are the people that that are in our public consciousness. Right. And so, mm-hmm. you know, like this morning I saw that Wynton Marcellus's father died. Yeah, and, and that's another oh, no. thing. Some of these people are the richest people in the world, and they're dying. Like if they can't oh, yeah, afford to pay for difference. like top-notch medical care, and that top-notch medical care doesn't save them, like <laughs> the average no. Joe Blow is gonna have the same or worse medical care. Mm-hmm. So. And, I don't, it's, it's exposing a lot of flaws in our healthcare system, and and I don't, yes. I don't say that to it to attack the healthcare system and the people working in it. Like, obviously we need them, and, and they're trying as hard as they can. But, um, but yeah, th- there's going to be, um, you know, inquiries and, and investigations into how everything was handled, mostly sure. so that when we're in these shoes again, hopefully not for another hundred years, but um, <laughs> you know, we, we need to be better prepared clearly right. because. Right. Um, in a, in a, in one of the you know the most progressive countries on earth, as far as you know the, the human uh, human something index, I can't remember what it's called. Basically, the human index sounds like a really <laughs> weird like sci-fi show or like <laughs> uh, human development index. I believe yeah. Mm. Uh, HDI. Yeah. Um, you know we're we're towards the top of that list, and and we you know we really should Our have a better. Our infection rates are just yeah. terrible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I, I think a lot of it is just you know the the disunity or the, the lack of unity maybe in mm-hmm. in our country has has led to some of these people that that you know are gonna fly against the grain of whatever mm-hmm. right. some people say. Right, I think they just, just are doing the opposite just to do the opposite. You know, like I don't think it's actually right. their belief. I think they just are revolting because it wasn't their idea first you know like right. <laughs> mm. no, that may be so right. i will do the opposite yeah. of what everyone else says because i can yeah i think i think you're right yeah. because humans are terrible and that's today's <laughs> message uh no i mean I, I there, think there's, a, there's a duality there's definitely we're we're both good and and terrible <laughs> like there's i i keep having this mental image and i i hope that I mean, I hope that something like this does happen, but, um, you know, in our, in our park in, uh, oh, what is it? Sunset Park here in Salina, there are memorials to, um, all the soldiers that died in, in Vietnam and Korea. Mm-hmm. And, and mm-hmm. I don't know about the first world war, but definitely the second world war. And, and I hope it's not necessary, 
in that I hope we don't lose any local healthcare professionals. But um, if we do, I really hope that we see you know a memorial to them that goes up in our park. That that would be awesome. You know, and and mm-hmm. and to all the people that that have fought this thing. And and you know hopefully I don't. Have we had any deaths in Salina? I don't know that we have. I don't, not I, yet, I, I don't think. And, and hopefully think so. it stays that way. We have way. like I mean, four cases now, but. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I'm, if if what they're saying on TV and online is, is true, I, I think we'll probably wind up with, with multiple deaths in our county, and that, that's yeah. not good. Mm-hmm. Um, let's try to brighten the mood with our last few minutes here. I've got what? I've got a yeah. whole uh, a whole chain of jokes. Uh, oh, oh, sweet! I like yes. it. Oh. Love it. Okay. Let's hear it. All right. So, <laughs> these are the cheesiest I'm jokes ready. ever. Are you ready for this? I love right. it. So, dad jokes. Dad jokes. Are the <laughs> I love kind best. of. Kind of. All right. There are five hundred bricks on a plane. One of them falls off. How many are left? Four hundred and ninety-nine. Right. Okay. <laughs> What are the three steps to put an elephant in a refrigerator? You open the fridge, you put the elephant in, and then you close the refrigerator. <laughs> okay? Oh, so these All are right. like anti-jokes. What, what are the four steps to putting a giraffe in the refrigerator? You have to cut the neck? Or... <laughs> no, that's uh, terrible. You that's open so the fridge, you take the elephant out, you put the giraffe <laughs> in, and then you close the door. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, it gets uh, better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the king of the jungle, the lion, is hosting an animal party. Everyone is invited. What is the one animal that doesn't show up? The, gi- the lion, because he lied. No, the giraffe, because he's still in the fridge. <laughs> oh, I like it. <laughs> okay, wait, it keeps good. There's more. But wait, there's more. I know okay. that brick so is going to come back you, into play at some point. You're, <laughs> you're in the jungle and you want to uh, cross an alligator infested river. How do you get across without getting eaten? I don't know. You swim because all of the alligators are at the alligator party <laughs> or the animal party. <laughs> I keep falling into the same trap. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Same all right. One last, one last one. You get across the river, but you still die. What happened? You got hit in the head by the brick. You got hit by the brick. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you got it. I finally I got like it. I like it. I like it. There you go. All right, I've got, I've got uh, one dad joke here. All right. <laughs> I bought some shoes from a drug dealer. I don't know what he laced them with, but I was tripping all day. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's good. That's good I, I'm not even going to attempt a joke because I don't have any good jokes. Oh. <laughs> I had to look mine up. So. No, that was, that was very, uh, very, very good. So. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm that, reading a book about anti-gravity right now. Uh, it's impossible to put down. <laughs> yes. I love that one. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I think we're going to have to keep joke time up. This is, this is fun. This is fun. All right. Well, thank you very much for tuning in to another episode <laughs> of the Feely Daily Vlog. Um, hope you are well. Hope you stay well, and um, we are all pulling for you. And and hope hope that we can you know stick together as a community and as a world. So, uh, if you like this video, please like and subscribe below. Uh, click that notification bell so you can get updated every time we come out with a new episode. Um, Tim's hard at work on a new project that or that food bank project. Amber's mm-hmm. hard at work on another <laughs> video game thing. I'm making some stuff. I don't know when that'll be coming, <laughs> but there's a lot of things coming your way. So please stay tuned and. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye.